God of War was never about being subtle. Protagonist Kratos doesn't just kill, he annihilates anything in his path. He wants to open a door when he can smash it open instead. So when it came time to design the boss battles, did the game's developers go small? Oh no, they went as big as they could. Originally made for the PlayStation Portable, God of War Ghost of Sparta involved Kratos' search for his brother, Deimos, who is trapped in the underworld. After battling and then reconciling with Deimos, the two Spartan brothers eventually reach Thanatos, the primordial god of death, and challenge him together. But this being God of War, it wasn't epic enough. Thanatos soon grows from his mere human form into a gigantic creature, pitting the Spartans against an incredibly powerful force that fills the entire screen. The battle, of course, ends in Kratos' favor, and he reduces Thanatos' back to his human form and manages to bring death to the god of death. The legendary Kraken is an enormous tentacled creature with a giant mouth that is hell-bent on devouring Kratos. I am through doing the bidding of the gods! Come down here and face me now, Zeus! It lurches out of the sea, wrapping its tentacles around columns for support, stabbing and even vomiting at the Spartan from a towering height. Kratos can only defeat it by dodging the beast's piercing limbs until he can hack them off one by one. Then, as the beast falls, Kratos has to use a moving bridge as a spear through the Kraken's mouth, which erupts in a geyser of blood. Talk about mind-blowing. <laughs> It's safe to say Kratos has made his fair share of enemies throughout the years, and the primary antagonist of 2018's God of War on the PlayStation 4 is no exception. You've barely found your footing in the game's new and northern setting when the stranger arrives unannounced to your tranquil abode. Oh. I thought you'd be bigger. This tattooed and tattered-looking Norseman knows who you are. Despite Kratos' best efforts at a peaceful life with his son Atreus, he's forced into conflict with this stranger. Before you know it, you're bashing the interloper around the far corners of the battlefield over and through terrain, using hulking trees, your house, and even a chunk of a mountain as weapons against him. It's awesome. In one of the more involved combat encounters featured in the entire series, Kratos must square off against not one, but two sisters of fate. The first sister can fly and shoot energy from a distance, forcing the player into a difficult game of dodge and counter. This would be tough enough on its own, but it gets even crazier when the second sister shows up. She goes the extra mile by taking Kratos back in time, specifically to the final boss battle of the first game. The sword which you stand on delivered your victory against Ares. Without it, you will be the one who dies this day. Kratos from the present must ward off an attempt to sabotage Kratos from the past in order to preserve his own life in one of the most thrilling and surprising boss battles in the series. God of War 3 remains the most over-the-top game in a whole franchise built around overstatement. So how else could the game start but with an entire army of titans climbing Mount Olympus so that Kratos can destroy the gods? And for an appetizer, Kratos takes on one of the most powerful of all the gods, Poseidon, Lord of the Sea. Typically, a boss fight would just be an encounter in a large space between the protagonist and the boss. Here, however, Kratos' battle with Poseidon is split into various pieces, intercut with platforming, combat with normal enemies, and even puzzles. The over all effect is to make the battle appear larger, longer, and more epic than it already would be. And it definitely works, even if it's just a brief victory in the crazy life of Kratos. No matter how many gods fall, there will always be another to stand against you. As if one god of the underworld wasn't enough, in God of War 3, Hades, a contemporary god of death, and Kratos must battle to the death. As the battle continues, the walls light into flame and shadowy figures squirm in the background. Meanwhile, the god of death himself is represented as a frightening, scarred, and boiled and melted monster. Eventually, Kratos rips away Hades' own chain hooks and uses them to rip the god of death's soul right out in one extremely metal moment. In 2018's God of War, Kratos' quest to reach the summit of the Midgard mountain finds him face to face with a massive dragon. The first phase of the encounter is easy enough to survive, but once you reach the top of the mountain, the real fight begins. Not only is this dragon huge, he's also vicious, ugly, and shoots lightning out of his mouth on top of clawing and biting. You'll use this electric discharge to your advantage as you hurl giant crystals at his gaping maw, exploiting the dragon's rather volatile nature. The epic fight comes to an end when Kratos stabs him in the throat 
throat with an oversized crystal, before falling to the ground just in time to pose like a true action hero. Typically, a boss fight in God of War has a certain amount of build-up. Kratos may see the monster or have some sense of it long before he engages in actual combat with it. But the Scorpius fight goes in the other direction. As Kratos is navigating his way through the labyrinth, the Queen of the Scorpions leaps in with no warning. Once in combat, the Scorpius fight itself requires a high degree of dexterity from the player, since most of her attacks can't be blocked and the fighting space is relatively small. In addition, the creature's armor is a type that can only be cracked with a specific weapon, which locks the player into a fighting style different from other bosses. Towards the end of the original God of War, there's an extended puzzle and platforming sequence in an area of Pandora's Temple. Once solved, players notice a pair of double doors way in the back, being hammered over and over. The beat is a warning to the player, a declaration that something big and angry is trying to get in. Players have to defeat Pandora's Guardian, an enormous minotaur clad in iron armor. Despite its size, the creature can bound across the room at great speed, so that Kratos can never have any breathing space. All around, lava falls and streams from the ceiling. That's a whole lot going on in a very confined little space, and Kratos has practically no room to maneuver. It's one of the most up-close and personal battles across the entire franchise, with a creature whose armor breathes flame no less. Kratos spends nearly the whole opening sequence of God of War 2 battling the Colossus of Rhodes, a giant statue so large even Kratos can't seem to kill it. He can hit it with his blades and even stab it in one of its eyes, but it just keeps on going. Kratos escapes from it time and again, mixing up the gameplay with platforming, combat, and encounters with smaller enemies. When he does encounter the Colossus directly, they are in large, open spaces, and Kratos' primary assaults occur as breathtaking quick-time events. In the end, not even Kratos can defeat this being in a conventional way. He has to travel inside the statue and solve an extended platforming puzzle section, destroying the Colossus from within. The Colossus fight is, indeed, a colossal achievement and one of the most memorable moments in the whole franchise. Plus, the Colossus even gets the last laugh in the fight once you beat him. Do you see, gods of Olympus? Do you need more proof than this? At the very beginning of the franchise, Kratos, desperate for victory, sold himself into servitude to the god of war. Yet Ares betrays him by sending him into a rage that kills his own family. For the whole of the first game, Kratos hurtles towards his revenge. The final battle of the first god of war is a lot of things wrapped up into one. It's a culmination of Kratos' journey. It's the pivotal moment that dooms the gods of Olympus forever, and it's big. As in, Kratos grows to physically gigantic proportions to fight an equally monstrous god. Ares is a difficult opponent as all final bosses should be. But eventually, Kratos triumphs, killing the god of war and claiming the mantle for himself. But now there is an empty throne in Olympus, and a new god of war is needed. So at the end of the first game, Kratos kills the god of war. How can it ever get more epic than that? Simple, by killing the king of the gods himself, Zeus. At the start of God of War 2, Zeus deceives and betrays Kratos, stripping him of his hard-won divinity and killing him. Except, Kratos isn't the kind of guy to let a silly thing like death get in his way. The rest of the game is a bloodbath as Kratos sets his sights on one goal, claiming his revenge. By the end of the game, Kratos and Zeus do battle, and in the process, Zeus grows from human size to a monstrous scale and back again in a truly epic fight. Unfortunately, just when Kratos is about to kill Zeus, the goddess Athena sacrifices herself to save him. Know this, my son. You have started a war you cannot possibly win. Zeus, in other words, escapes to fight another day, specifically as the final boss in the next game as well, God of War 3. In a way then, this boss fight is over two games long. Epic enough for you? We're in for an epic, confusing showdown. Of all the physically large characters and monsters across the franchise, and there are a lot, the biggest was the defeated titan Kronos. In the first God of War, he is more location than person. Pandora's temple is chained to his back, and Kratos spends a large portion of that game there. But in God of War 3, Kronos meets Kratos face to face, and the trapped titan is definitely not happy to see him. The 
In a franchise defined by grandiose scale, this is its crowning achievement. The raw size of Kronos makes him more of a location than a monster, and the battle itself reflects this. Kratos spends a good portion of this fight platforming on the being he's fighting. Combining platforming, small combats, quick time events, and pure spectacle on a titanic scale, the Kronos battle is not only the single most epic fight in the God of War series, but one of the most epic encounters in all of gaming. Only Kratos could fight a boss so massive that he's also the level itself. It's just so God of War.